about going keto, but you are freaked out about all the rules and what you can't have, well, guess what? I want you to tune into this video because the keto police shouldn't be scaring you. Going keto is a lot more or offers a lot more flexibility than you think. I lost 36 inches and 30 pounds, and guess what? The whole time I drank alcohol, had rice and sushi every week, and potatoes and french fries. What? I am not joking around. Tune in to learn more. Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I have to talk to you about the keto police and how unnecessary the keto police are. But most importantly, the, the main point of the video today is keto is a lot less complicated than you think. It's a lot easier than you think to do keto. It is a lot more, there, there are a lot more flexibility, excuse me, I'm, I'm not saying this articulately or in the right um, uh, grammar <laughs> ways that I want to say it. It's been a long day. There's a lot more flexibility in doing keto and losing weight than you think. And when I have witnessed these, what I'm calling keto police or keto militia, um, leaving comments on YouTube or in Facebook groups or just on any social media, you know, telling people, well, that's not really keto. You can't have that on keto. You're not doing keto if you're eating that. Like, I want to say, con I find myself constantly saying this week, like, who said? Like, who said you can't have yogurt on keto? Who said that you can't have a piece of fruit on keto? You know, granted, there are general thoughts that you probably wouldn't be eating like donuts on keto or, you know, you probably wouldn't be having fruit on a regular basis on keto. That's generally like, you know, the thoughts. But the reality is, if, if anybody's keeping it real, there's several different approaches and ways to interpret this or any diet and still be successful. And I'm going to suggest, of course, everything I say in this video is my opinion, my experience, and certainly, number one, what has worked for me. I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds going keto my way. Um, it's also worked for my clients. So the clients of mine that have taken my keto bootcamp course online, which teaches you how to do keto my way, my approach, my techniques, or clients that have worked with me with one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well for people that kind of want to do more like private and, and more customizing, um, you know, a more customized approach. Um, all of those people that I've worked with as well who follow the way that I do it, um, where we're probably breaking a lot of these rules that these, you know, keto police are, are putting out there. Um, guess what? They've all lost weight too. So I would suggest ultimately if, if does the ends justify the means? I would think so. And if we're not hurting anybody, I would think so. So, you know, there's a lot of people, for example, that, that do keto and they, they do 25 grams of carbs a day or less or 20 grams of carbs a day or less. I would rather shoot myself than do 20, 20 grams of carbs a day or less. Since the day I started, when my doctor told me what to do, my dog just came in here and is going to start barking. I have been doing 50 grams of carbs or less. Um, that's what I've always done. I don't want to say that that is the only way to do keto. It's obviously a higher carb approach. I lost weight at the rate of, Bijan, stop it, at the rate of about a pound to a pound and a half maybe. I'm going to say weight. I probably lost weight at the rate of about half a pound to a pound a week. I think a couple weeks I lost maybe a pound and a half. It was usually more like a half a pound to a pound, which is really what is more recommended for healthy and sustainable weight loss. And guess what? That is what I did. I had healthy, long-term, sustainable weight loss. It is my suggestion that a lot of these people, not all of them, who are running around correcting everybody else, pointing the finger, going, that's not keto, that's not keto, you can't eat that on keto. These are the people who are probably trying to do keto so strictly with 20 grams of carbs or less, but they're also the ones that are doing what I tell, what I've never done, and what I tell all my clients not to do, which is 
um, play the whole net carbs game. You know, and these people, I see them. I see them in the in the groups. They're like, oh, guess what? I had this, you know, cheeseburger on this keto bread with, you know, this uh, keto chips on the side and blah, blah, blah. And it only has, you know, 14 net carbs, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just looking at it going, keto bread, keto chips, keto drink, keto Kool-Aid. And I'm thinking, there's, there's, I've always felt, and when I look at the average food, whether it's a protein bar or ice cream or cookies or cereal or whatever that has been made keto and has net carbs. If you look at the actual carbs and then you look at the ingredients, first of all, the ingredients is usually a chemical shitstorm. Half of the ingredients you can't read. It's gonna be filled with erythritol, which is typically going to irritate most people's stomachs. Erythritol ferments in your stomach. I don't know if you know that. I can't. I can't tolerate it. Some people can in small amounts. Um, uh, it's it's going to um, you know it, it's so filled with fake ingredients, and then the actual amount of carbs they have in order for them to hit that whatever company's making those foods, in order for them to get that net carb number, they're injecting it with this like a completely unnatural amount and usually an unnatural form of fiber because they've all figured out that in order to get net carbs, you take the amount of carbs, and subtract the amount of fiber, and that gets you net carbs. So what do these companies do? Bichon. Bichon. He's just barking at probably like a fly outside the window. Oh no, there's somebody walking across the street. So with net carbs, most of the people who are, are out there saying, you know, you can only have 20 grams of carbs a day, they're the ones buying all these fake products. And, you know, they're not eating a whole food diet. I've seen this time and time again. Again, I am not saying everybody, but a lot of them. And they're buying these fake products. They're eating keto ice cream, keto cookies, keto protein bars, keto cereal, keto everything. And saying, well, guess what? It only has 12 net carbs, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? It, if you count up the actual carbs that they're adding, they're probably having 150 actual carbs a day. And they're wondering like why they're not losing weight um, and why they've had to be keto for so long just to lose like 10 pounds. But what's worked for me and what worked for me and what has worked really well for my clients is eating whole real foods. And guess what? I had, um, I don't want to say I had fruit all the time, but I definitely had, you know, somebody in this group was yelling at another woman like, you can't have an apple on keto. Well, if you want to have an apple and count that in your carbs, you can have an apple. It's probably not advisable to have, you know, apples every day if because by the sheer amount of carbs. And then somebody put up, you know, in this group, they said, um, you know, Please, I'm new. I'm just asking a question. Can we have legumes on on um, keto? And somebody else, you know, there were all these comments. They're saying no. And this guy put up a, a, a list. You know, it was like a um, an infographic. He's like, look at this list. You, as you can see, you're not allowed to have that. And and I'm looking at this list, and I'm thinking like, who says? Like. Who, who says, you're, you're telling this new person who's looking at you going, oh, what says on that, that infographic that I, I'm not allowed to have it. But who made that list? Like, that's a Canva graphic. Like, how do we know, like, your little brother down the street didn't make that? Is there, like, one be-all, end-all created by God Almighty keto guide? No, there isn't. If you look at the paleo diet, there are like 40 different approaches to the paleo diet. Some people do paleo and eat dairy. Some people swear that you're not allowed to have dairy on the paleo diet. Some people um, think that you can have, again, again, legumes on the paleo diet. Some people say it's strictly what you know hunter-gatherers had available. Some people swear you can't have fruit on paleo. Some people have fruit all the time because they're like, hey, if it grows on the ground or it grows on a tree, I can have it. Some people say, you know, I mean, there's different approaches, but the bottom line is if you find something that works and you want to call it paleo or paleo keto or keto carnivore or carnivore with fruit, who cares? You know, like, why do we have to go around and, and tell everybody like, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, and like, scare other people who are just getting started. And 
you know, my whole point is, you know, and I always say this, whenever I'm on social, I always say, this is my way of doing keto. You know, other people sometimes want to be more hardcore. They want to do a lot less carbs. I like to live a little. I, I've had the whole time I've lost weight, and this is what I talk about in my, um, all of these links are down below, my free keto quick start guide, my keto cookbook, my um, keto boot camp where I teach you how to go keto. And of course I teach this to clients that I coach, but like I found that I was able to really make keto a lifestyle and not feel like I was on a diet, something that I was like counting down to when I would get off of it. If I, I was able to do that by cutting out snacking, because I, in the beginning, I was snacking all the time. I still was like focusing on my sweet tooth. What could I have that was low carb and would still be 50 grams of carbs or less that would satisfy my sweet tooth? That was my obsession when I first went keto. But then I found that like, I was constantly feeding my sweet tooth and I never really, you know, I was always hungry and I was always eating and I, I just could get to dinner and I could not, I had no carbs left. Well then, I started speaking the devil. talking about this made me think about my ketones. Um, once I started drinking exogenous ketones, um, that helped me get my, my appetite and my cravings at keep it at bay. I cut out snacking. I, I proactively and very deliberately cut out snacking because I realized that having the nut butter and, um, you know, some of the, some of the things I was having, and even nuts, that I was having in between my meals. You know, I, I do intermittent fasting, so I'd have my first meal as lunch, and then I'd have my second meal as dinner, but I would have snacks in between, and I was adding up a lot of carbs, so I cut that out, but what I found is when I cut out the snacking, I, I had um, exogenous ketones in between my keto coffee for breakfast, and then I had lunch, so I had two meals a day, and I still do this, lunch and dinner, Pretty much no snacking in between. I don't want to say I never have a snack. Sometimes I do. There's one food that I have. Occasionally, I let myself have this treat. It's BHU um, keto cookie dough. But I have a real problem not eating the entire container of where I'm sitting. So I don't let myself get that a lot. But it's delicious and the ingredients are very clean. Um, but on a regular basis, I don't snack. And what I found is if I... Um, don't eat a lot of carbs during the day. In other words, I started to learn what carbs to cut out. Like in the beginning, I was having plantain chips. I would have a lot of plantain chips with dip. And each plantain chip was one gram. So I would count out 20 chips, and I'd have 20 chips, which is 20 grams of carbs, and um, like the Trader Joe's buffalo chicken dip, the Trader Joe's spinach dip, the Trader Joe's salmon dip. There's a lot of really great keto stuff dips, among other things, uh, that Trader Joe's offers, and I was living off that in the beginning, but I was having those plantain chips, I was having other things that had carbs in them, and again, what would happen is, I would be, I would, I would have consumed like 30 grams of carbs by dinner, and then if I wanted to have like some of the rice or potatoes or anything that had carbs in it, I pretty much felt like I'd used up all of my carbs. So if you want to have like, for example, um, half of a potato, like I now know because I've memorized all this stuff, and you will too if you're starting keto. Like 100 grams of a potato is uh, 20 grams of carbs. Sorry, I just had to straighten up the back. I'm not trying to shove my boots in your face. Um, 100 grams of carbs, or I think about um, a fourth of a cup. Is it a fourth of a cup or a half a cup of rice? I think it's a half a cup of rice, like a serving of rice. Um, those are like two two carbs that I, I have regularly had is, is rice and potatoes, but it's not a big serving. I can't have unlimited rice and unlimited potatoes. You can have some, and that's about 20, 25 grams. But still, that's like 50% of my carbs. So in order to be able to have, for example, some french fries with my double uh, Whataburger no bun on a plate, if I wanted to be able to have some of the fries, I had to like bank my carbs for the second half of the day. That's what I did. I learned that for me, being able to have things like going out for sushi once a week and being able to have 
part of a roll. I wouldn't hate the whole roll because rice really does, you know, I measure it on my glucose monitor. The rice really jacks up my glucose. But um, more than any other carb, it's very weird. More than oatmeal, more than even an apple, more than any other thing, rice for me is really a thing. Just goes to show you, I really recommend the continuous glucose monitor. Um, very, very helpful. Um, but, um, you know, I found that that's what made keto very, very tolerable, very much like a lifestyle. Um, and, and again, um, I'm going to do a heavy plug here for my cookbook, but I made this keto cookbook that now we're, we're at the final phase of adding the last of these 16 new recipes to the cookbook. But all the recipes in this cookbook are recipes that I make here on a regular basis um, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and there's like some six, I think five or six coffee recipes in there, some different bulletproof coffees and stuff. Um, but the, this is the kind of stuff that is so yummy, so delicious, you'll never feel like, oh God, this is what I have to have for breakfast, or oh, this is a crappy lunch, I'm on a diet. Like there's, it's just such a great diversity of food, different kinds of protein, it's not all beef. People have so many misunderstandings about what keto is. And a lot of it's around what you can and can't eat. There's, they don't realize how much diversity you can have. And, and they just never set their foot around, they never step their foot outside of what they've heard they can and can't do. Well, I didn't, I didn't do that when I was going keto. I, I literally only followed what my doctor told me, which is 50 grams of carbs or less a day. And that's what I did. And it worked for me. So, um, I'm looking at my time to see what I'm with today. Okay, I'm, I'm good on time. I thought it said 38 minutes, and I was like, shit! I'm really trying to keep my videos to the point for you guys. But anyway, you know, I saw all of these keto comments by keto police people, and it really started to piss me off because I know if other people see those when they're new to keto or they're starting it, they're gonna get discouraged. And I wanted to share with all of you, again, my experience, you don't need to be that strict. Sure, if you want to, I'm certain there are legions of people who have been that strict, who have done 20 grams of carbs or less, who have followed all of these other rules about keto and done really well. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. What I am saying is that that's not the only way to do keto, just like there's not one way to do paleo. And the best thing that we should all accept at this time is that there's more than one way to lose weight and even more than one way to lose weight with one diet approach. And I certainly have found that out myself. So I'm gonna start calling my approach, my my keto evolution, I think, as my assistant and I were talking about this. She goes, you should call it, you know, your your own approach, because it is, it's totally different than, than what other people are doing with keto. I'm starting to realize that more than ever. And I, I'm gonna really like blast this from the, the ceiling and, and talk about this on my YouTube channel because honestly, like I I think if, if I was going keto and I had to do 20 grams of carbs or less a day, and I had to say no fruit, no potatoes, no rice, no alcohol. I saw a video here on YouTube that came up on my feed and it was this beautiful woman. And she's like, here's why I quit keto. And she was saying, I loved keto, I lost weight on it, but you guys, I like to drink on the weekends. And I'm like, I, and I was looking at all the comments, this is like from three years ago, and I'm like, who told you that you can't do keto and drink? I drink every week. I drink, and I, and I, I really just drink on the weekends. It's usually just one night. But when I was losing my weight, I drank every weekend, typically again, one to two nights. When I drink, full disclosure, I typically drink now I've, I've worked up a little bit of a tolerance. I had an issue where I was, I wouldn't drink a lot at a time because I would get bad headaches. Um, so I've been able to just recently been able to drink more than one drink, but typically we would go out and I would have one to two drinks. I would say now I've been able to bump it up to have maybe two to three drinks. Whoa. Um, so I don't want to, you know, position myself as like, I'm going out and, you know, tying one on and, you know, going drinking on a bender every, every weekend or anything like that. You know, I'm 53 years old. Like those were those days were in my 20s. Um, but I do drink 
Um, I, I drink low carb drinks. Um, I know how to do that and I, I talk about that. I even posted up the best low carb drinks on my Instagram channel. I'll link that up below. I did a post, uh, a carousel post. Sorry guys, my husband just called me in the middle of the video so I'm gonna have to call him back. Um, but anyway, I was saying I will link up to my Instagram post where I did a carousel post on the best low carb drinks. Um, but again, I drank every weekend while I was losing weight and even my husband and I um, went on vacation two or th probably three or four times and, and I drank the whole time we were on vacation. Again, this is us going out to dinner and me having you know one to two glasses of wine. Um, it's not like I'm going out and having 40 shots every day or anything like that, but I was able to drink, drink low carb drinks, um, stay on keto. I wasn't even working out and I still lost weight. So I just really wanna share with you guys that number one, keto does not have to be that strict. There are more than one ways to do keto. Um, we all of us don't need the keto police. If you're the keto police, you need to relax and kind of stay in your own lane. And nobody's, if, if people aren't asking for your advice, your unsolicited advice, if you're being critical and, and, and harsh, like get over it and think about what your mother hopefully told you, like if you don't have anything nice to say, like especially to people who are just getting started. Um, but, you know, again, I just want to share with everybody to encourage you, like I was on the weight loss struggle bus as a fitness fanatic and the owner of a fitness company for years. I was working with trainers, dietitians, um, working with a bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment functional doctor. Um, I was on bioidenticals. I, I just could not lose weight. I was 30 pounds overweight. I didn't even know how what my weight was because I wouldn't weigh myself. I was terrified of what I weighed. I just. I knew I was overweight. I knew I wanted to lose pounds. I just didn't want to put a number to it because I, you know, that's how women are. Every woman watching this video knows what that feeling is like. When you don't want to weigh yourself and you don't want to say how much weight you have to lose. Because women only want to say, oh, I think I need to lose five pounds. Nobody wants to say, oh, I have to lose 30 pounds. Nobody, no one, no woman wants to say it. But when I, now that I'm past losing 30 pounds, I can say, hey, guess what? It was 30 pounds over my, my ideal weight. Um, I was stuck working out six to seven days a week, eating in a caloric deficit for the better part of 10 years, and I just stayed the same weight. I constantly stayed the same weight. I would lose a little bit. I would have a couple of areas, you know, over the past four or five years where I kind of get lean, but then the weight would come back on. And it was all had to do with, you know, insulin resistance for the most part and inflammation got with the right doctor, the right functional medicine doctor. She tweaked my hormones a bit. She put me on keto and my whole life changed. I lost 36 inches, 30 pounds, and I went keto. I got to my goal weight of 138, 5'5", um, and then I surpassed that. I actually got down to 134, and then I started to kind of get a little bit worried that I was, which I never thought I would say these words in my whole life. I thought I was, I was gonna lose too much more because I really didn't want to lose any more weight. And so the actual, the end of last year, and I'll link to that video down below, we started adding carbs back in. It was actually not a positive experience for me, um, both from a stomach upset perspective, but also from a weight gain perspective. I knew I would be gaining weight. Um, everybody knows that if you go off keto, you will gain some of that water weight back immediately, right up, you know, seven to 10 pounds is very typical. Um, that is what happened to me, but then I gained some additional weight back as I continued to have carbs. But it was more distressing to me that I just had horrible stomach upset. And so as such, both because I wanted to lose the weight and get you know, that, that weight that I had gained with the carbs back off, um, more so, I was I got myself comfortable with the first amount of weight gain, and I kind of liked like I kind of liked having my curves back. Like I had lost too much weight in my boobs and too much weight in my ass for my liking and for my husband's liking. So I was kind of happy with like initially the first amount of weight that I gained back. Like I was okay with that. I was probably thinking, okay, this is cool. Maybe I want to lose like three or four pounds. That's where I was at when I first gained that, and I did. I gained right about nine nine to 10 pounds. Um, but then I probably gained, and, and I, I'll be honest with you guys, I have not weighed myself. I've been measuring myself right now. I've been 
back on keto four weeks. This coming up week will be week five. I've got to get myself back on the scale. Um, but if I'm being truthful with you all, um, I just got scared. I didn't want to get back on the scale. Um, women, sometimes when you stop weighing yourself, you just develop a fear. And that's, I will never again go through a phase, talked about this in one of my last videos, where I'm not measuring myself, I'm not weighing myself. Other people think that's diet culture and that's, you know, bad behavior. I don't think it is that at all. I think when I don't weigh myself, that's when I get wonky. It, for me, it keeps me sane to to see where I'm at and that combined with things like my continuous glucose monitor. This is just as much about how I look as keeping my body healthy and in a really good optimized state for longevity going forward. So that's where I'm at. I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, I will link down below um, for you guys to snag a copy of my free keto quick start guide. If you guys are you know, kicking the tires on keto and you'd like to um, you know, hear more about my story and my experience, I'll link at the end of this video, of course, to my playlist here on YouTube for tons of videos um, with my experience on keto and losing weight along the way. Um, I'll link to my keto cookbook. It's just 27 bucks. You can grab that as a digital version. Anytime we add new recipes, you get them for free. And then of course, I'm gonna link down below as well to my boot camp, which is my online course. It's just 99 bucks. When you get the boot camp, you will get, if you mention this video and you email us at kellyandcarrialexa.com, you'll get the cookbook for free. So you get the boot camp and the cookbook. You learn how to do keto. It's a self-paced video tutorial course taught by me, of course. Um, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do have limited spots available. And you can just email me at kelly at kellyandcarrialexa.com to inquire about availability and scheduling. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I'm going to go call my husband back. It is Friday and we are also getting a new puppy tomorrow. I'm bringing her home so you guys will get to see Sydney, uh, Bichon's new baby sister next week. And that's it. Peace out. Have a great holiday weekend. It's not a holiday weekend. I don't know why I just said holiday, but I'm just going to leave it in there. It feels like a holiday. <laughs> Thanks guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time on the Kelly Show. Hey guys, I hope this video was super helpful for you. Like I said, I am linking up to a playlist here with tons of keto videos for you. If you're new, feel free to check them out. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments below.